Hey guys and welcome to this week's image walkthrough. So before we start off I just want to get to some comments that were left on last week's video. Uh, a few of the comments were just mentioning how that the the edit is speeded up and saying they can't follow along but this is the point of the image walkthroughs, it's, they're not full actual tutorials uh, and it couldn't it can't be a full image walkthrough because sometimes images can take up to like four hours or sometimes even ten hours so I can't just spend ten hours uh, on the video talking you through every tiny step in, in real time so what I do is I create the speed edits and I then talk and comment on the speed and speed edits so you know what I am doing so I'm uh, a couple of things uh, feel free to, I love it's good to get feedback so that's that's good for me so I can make these videos better uh, but one thing I do want to ask is would you prefer the videos if they were cut into two parts so if I, if I slowed them down a little bit but then did each image walkthrough in uh, in two parts so then you get to see a little bit more or would you prefer it as it is with the speed that it uh, usually around 10 to 20 minutes and me commenting over the top so please just give me some feedback and let me know and then I'll try and see what I can do so this week's image here is this one uh, the image of the guy is a stock model from DeviantArt stock, uh, shot by Vince Voltage he was a pretty cool kind of alternate photographer and he's put some good stocks on DeviantArt so feel free to go and use them yourself and then just again free stock for the background and the elements uh, so yeah let's just jump right into the edit then so this is the uh, image uh, out of camera raw and and just pulling up the uh, midtones here to pull up the brightness of the image so let's play so all I'm doing now is uh, I, sometimes when I'm using the pen tool I just pull up the brightness using curves, a curves adjustment just so I can see better the, the kind of subjects that I'm cutting out. As you can tell the image was a, a little bit dark and moody so always try and help yourself by brightening the image when making good cutouts. So again as well, you, when you can find cool stock models like this to use it's always a bonus. Uh, is the stock on deviant art kind of goes up and down in quality but this is a a good a good person to kind of follow on there and use his stock so pretty much most of the time I always use uh, the pen tool to cut out you can still refine the edges and everything it just you just have far more control with the pen tool so there we go just feeling the cutting out Again, just uh, naming the selection and then saving it, and then just in case it crashes, because recently Photoshop has been crashing. And then just I was just using the refine edge there, you know, saving my uh, stock model. Now I'm just going through my stock files to find background stock that works. Uh, my original plan was to have some kind of industrial kind of stock background to go with this look, but then I couldn't find anything that worked. So then I found this kind of backstreet 80s looking alleyway where I thought well, it could be quite good. Uh, I don't know what this is on the head but it's, it's definitely some kind of cool piece of uh, hat wear going on. So all I'm doing now is going through uh, DeviantArt and finding more stock images. So because I had the alleyway I had, and I had, I had the idea of a barrel kind of burning behind him like you see in the movies and then obviously there's a sign up here so I had plans for this sign and the background as well the stock background I had blurred out using Gaussian blur so what I'm doing here is I got kind of a, a fire overlay which was a stock overlay again from DeviantArt and all I did was bring it in and stick it onto a screen blend mode because the fire was shot against black uh, when you put it to screen blend mode anything that is is uh, darker than the is it 50% grey something along those lines disappears so the black disappears and then leaves on it everything that's uh, lighter than the 50% grey or something along those lines <laughs> I don't take my word for that uh, 
but yeah, basically it just gets rid of the dark. So you can, so then now I've got rid of the dark, I'm going to then manipulate it with free transform and warp and just try and make it match the kind of the circle of the barrel. Like so. And then as you can see there's still a little bit of the uh, background of the fire so I kind of just use a layer mask and blend that out with a brush tool. I'll resizing again with free transform. So next again is uh, something I've been practicing is kind of the uh, rim light effects that the Russian digital artists use because I really like it. So I was using a color dodge and screen blend mode on, on blank layers as you can see here and just painting them in. But a good way to keep within the uh, within the kind of realms of the guy and not going onto the background is just keep using the same selection that you used before to cut the guy out. Uh, if you press Control and click on the layer mask, the selection will appear again, and you can paint just inside the selection, and it won't affect anything on the outside of the selection. So now I'm just going through and painting these selections on. Again, this is quite new. The rim light painting effect so what I'm doing now is I'm just playing around and painting it on here where I think the light would be hitting on the edge of the ears and pretty much making this part up as I go along because sometimes just by experimenting is how, how you learn. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to find a triad of colours so we've got the orangey yellow colour here so pink and the other third colour of the triad would be a blue. So that's kind of what I was thinking when I was looking at the colour wheel. So what I'm doing now is I'm lighting up this old sign here with uh, I'm gonna need a dodge uh, and a brush, just set to pink. Now again, just trying this uh, rim light effect, this time on the right hand side, as if the light from this side is just creating the the light on the the light on the side of this uh, character. Again, I'm not really sure what I'm doing. I've watched a few YouTubes and just kind of guessed what they're doing, and then just had a go on on my image and just see if I can work it out playing around. Again, just kind of using screen blend mode or color dodge. Just notice as well, I say kind of a lot in these tutorials. I'll try and stop that because it's probably annoying. <laughs> and here we go, so I'll just blo uh, colour in the hair now. <clears throat> Again with the same methods. Colour dodge and linear dodge and normal blend mode. All on these blank layers here, so as you can see I'm just building it up gradually on blank layers. So as I said before I had the triad of colours, so now I'm trying to add blue in. So we have the orangey, pink and blue. So the background's could have been mainly blue. Also, I want it quite moody. So I'm just adding, pulling down the highlights with curves adjustments. So now what I'm doing is I'm playing around again, just uh, experimenting, try to paint, paint the pink highlights onto the windows. And on this little area here, behind the sign, Now for the front part, bringing more overlays in, obviously we want some embers coming from this fire going behind him and then I'd like a little bit in front of him to create like a sense of depth and realism. Trying out some more overlays here, that one didn't seem to work for me. So now just adding the hot spots into the fire. So a linear dodge and a blank layer with a brush, just painting them in and then lowering the opacity. Now some orangey colour and colour dodge again on a blank layer. Playing again with the rim light. If this were real life, I'm sure there would be kept some rim lighting on this side of the ear as well. Just paint it out a little bit to make it more realistic. 
Now again, just going into the stock library and pulling out some lens flares. I was like a little bit of a lens flare in an image, but uh, I do have one on here, but I do change it later, just it was too strong and it was kind of taken away from the image as a whole. So again, usually these kind of overlays, you just t switch them onto a screen blend mode and all the dark disappears and just leaves you with the highlights, the light parts. So now just having some kind of dust spots, again overlays around where the light is, as if the light would be hitting the dust kind of in the air, close to the, the lens and a little bit further away. Again, screen blend mode, very easy, and then you can just move them around where you want. Adding some more fire embers in. Blurring them out, as they would be in the foreground. Now I'm just doing some dodge and burn on the image. I don't think I did too much on this image, but again, curves, dodge and burn. Everything I do in the layers panel is usually non-destructive with adjustment layers, so it's even the same with dodge and burn. Using just painting in the effects on a layer mask with curves. Just adding a little bit more contrast, darkening the darks. And uh, whiting in the whites. Putting the overlays back on. Uh, this is probably me thinking. Having a look at the image, just sitting still over it and thinking what I want. And the contrast of the image through a black and white adjustment layer now. I'd make it, I'd turn it onto soft light and messing with the contrast. Now opening Nick Color Effects 4, this is a brilliant plugin which I always use to pull out details or add some kind of finishing effect. I believe I used Bleach Bypass, which is a cool one. Now, again, wanting the image to be a little bit more contrasty and darker and moodier. Using curves to adjust that, just to pull down the darks and then... Searching my library for stock, so I'm looking for something. Smoke. I do believe I uh, intended to have some more smoke coming up here, but in the end, I uh, just didn't seem to work and I didn't think it needed it when I saw the effects that it was having. Again now adding some overlays. This kind of uh, light leak on the from the lens. Just again adds a bit more atmosphere. Adding some more embers, but this time in the foreground to create the sense of depth. Now adding some detail with Topaz Detail, which is basically a sharpening plugin. Sharpening the, the main guy. Now putting all of the overlays back on and I'm just looking at this and thinking it's a bit too bright and it takes away the kind of contrast and the mood of the image. So all I do is then, on a blank layer, on linear dodge, is just kind of painting the glow effect behind him, which seems to work a lot better and just kind of goes more with the image. Now just refining the rim light on the hat again, because again everything is non-destructive. Now again, playing with the contrast having a player with lens, uh, lens blur. So at the end of an image when you're nearly done, it's always good to have a little experiment and play around, but sometimes you like the effects what you get maybe, and sometimes you don't, but it's good to just play around and see if you can come up with anything that makes the image look different. But in this case, I tried the lens blur and it didn't work, so I just left it as it was. So this is the final image. So again, 
love the contrast of it, uh, I love the colours, like I like the pink and the orange and the blues. Uh, the model, the stock model is brilliant. Uh, uh, sometimes good stock can totally make an image better than it should be. So I get this, to be honest this was just a practice image because I wanted it to practice the room lighting. But as you can see it turned out pretty good for a practice image. So that's it for this image. I hope you got some help from it or tips or techniques. Uh, please feel free to comment again. I'd like to know but how you're liking these, if you want them to be longer, shorter. Any kind of uh, feedback is appreciated, even if it's uh, not good feedback. <laughs> uh, so until next week, PEACE!